You will use the app like Uber, but not anymore to call some driver, but an automatically guided car, a self-driven car, will come to your hotel or wherever you are and will bring you to the airport. No, Los Angeles is one of the cities with the heaviest traffic who told me in 2030 Los Angeles will be private car driven free. And this will allow to transform highways into parks and other public spheres. Bitcoin is also NA for, for an upside objective, isn't it? This not? is true, yeah, new all time highs, that's what happens. And I mean, I believe in the uptrend at least. It, it has very good momentum. The pullback that we saw, it looks like nothing on the chart. It's pretty remarkable because it was 17, 18% of downside, but it looks like a that blip. That is nothing for me. <laughs> it really yeah. is. And uh, now, of course, within like you know days, we've had a resumption higher. So I feel pretty good about the trend there as well. The breakout creates a, a long-term catalyst for Bitcoin too. It's always going to be higher beta. You know, the spread to the 50-day moving average. I looked at it this morning. It was something like 13, 14% versus the S&P, which is about 4%. So those are initial support readings. Uh, but that's just the risk that you take by Commodities investing. in general. And, and we actually, a couple years ago, that, that one guy we have on, the oil guy, said we're in a super cycle. I expected rate cuts this last year. I, I did. I think the Fed's been super tardy, both on the way up with inflation and on the way down. In fact, the, the, when I look back historically, Joe, at the Fed's performance, it's an absolute outlier in post-war history. They raised rate or didn't raise rates the entire surge of inflation from zero to eight and a half percent. And then um, they, they cut or they raised rates the entire time that inflation decelerated from nine back to three percent. Um, and no one's ever done that before. Usually the Fed is is raising rates when inflation is accelerating and cutting rates when it's decelerating. And they've done neither of those. They were late to tighten and now they've been late to ease. So, uh, which is all the reason why I would say the best thing for the Fed to do is to ignore the politics of the election uh, and really look at the data. And I do think if they look at the data, I, I don't believe it, it's probably September uh, that uh, is our first rate cuts are probably in September. And frankly, maybe 50 basis points, maybe not the 75 that people think. And it's, you know, there are still 1.4 jobs for every one person looking for a job. Wages are still increasing. You saw a story uh, with Europe stocks, you know, the projecting on earnings of European companies, and it's because the U.S. consumer is still strong. So, uh, you know, I, I think uh, uh, this next decade is going to be all about risk-adjusted uh, risk asset uh, management and uh, active management. Very good ruse. This is a ruse to end gasoline-powered cars, which is what the Bidens and their uh, Green New Deal bureaucrats have always wanted. I mean, that's the way I look at it. You disagree? I don't disagree with you, and I fully agree with my colleague from Wyoming, John Barrasso. We drive over a mile high every day. We drive in bitter cold, and we drive through mountains. Electric vehicles were not built to perform in the environments that we drive in every day. They're expensive and they don't work, and they don't have enough range, and we don't have enough EV charging stations. And it is something that was built for the coastal elites, by the coastal elites, and they're the ones who need to use those, but they can't impose them on middle America because they weren't built for us and they won't work for us. Welcome, Welcome to the crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you're joining the patrons. If you're not a part of the patrons, make sure you're hitting the cash app. And we have the having next month. And next month is very important because crypto is going to move behind the curtain. All the action is going to be over in the emerging markets. And America is going to be all about distractions and the election. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now we have the halving next month. I definitely don't expect a pump. But don't forget, guys, we have Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Dogecoin, which Coinbase is launching futures. So at the beginning of the month, I do expect us to move up. 
I don't expect a lot of liquidity coming into Bitcoin, but I definitely see altcoins making a move. Now, the Fed is keeping rates higher for longer to destroy this legacy market. Remember, we're in a fragmented world. Some people are saying two cuts. Some people are saying three cuts. Some people are saying no cuts. But guys, the only thing we have to do is sit back, get your popcorn, and watch the movie. Because we know that we need a crisis or a big distraction in order for them to cut rates. Because all the inflation that we're seeing right now is corporate greed. Remember, everything is owned by a handful of companies. It's this illusion of choice because they have 50 different names under one company. And then we have the EV push. Now we have eight states moving to ban gas cars by 2035. And guys, we know this is nothing but the Hegelian dialectic. They don't want private ownership. I don't care whether it's gas or EV. And it's not going to be by 2035. We're going to have driverless cars on the road in masses by 2028. And how do I know that? It's Schmita cycle. 2028 to 2029, the sheep go inside the metaverse. And remember, this fourth industrial revolution is going to be led by the emerging markets and China. And China wants to keep the mainland private. Remember, America was the experiment. All the mistakes the NWO made, now you're going to see the rise of China, and all those mistakes are going to be erased. They're using Hong Kong as a straw man to communicate with the rest of the world why everything inside of China, these big corporations, are owned by the government. Remember in the NWO book, I tell you that corporations are going to be your new government. And remember the crypto teacher told you, because he knows, when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Joining us right now is Michelle Carusa Cabrera, of course, a CNBC contributor and a friend of the show. It's good to see you. Good morning. Good to see you. So we have heard a lot about this. Um, what was the takeaway of what happened? This was pretty important. So I spoke with one of the CEOs who attended the meeting, and overall, I think the number one thing that was clear to this person was that China is not backing away from centralizing its economy, that it is not going to pursue pro-market reforms, as was suggested in her speech by the head of the IMF, uh, which is a big negative. I think a, a, a lot uh, went there to hear what the chairman was going to say about you know, their, uh, the future of the economy, and it's clear that they're trying to send a very positive message about the economy. She told these CEOs that the economy hasn't peaked, um, that a lot of people tell them how they should fix their economy, but they know how to fix their economy. But the bottom line is that the business environment is terrible and that they don't want to do the pro-market reforms that have been suggested. They don't believe in them. When you speak to Chinese officials and you ask about the private sector, the response you get back is, oh, we love small businesses. In other words, they conflate the private sector with small businesses. And then they go on to say... Because it's smaller than the government. Right, right. And then they go on to say, but, you know, they're not big enough and stable enough to support an economy. That's why we have to back the big state-owned businesses. They like big business as long as they're owned by the state and controlled by the state. And that's not a recipe for growth. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly... We're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust. 
and we will save over seven trillion dollars a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it is it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told as members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Very much a traditionalist. I like staying with the dollar. You know that from when I was there. It's make, mm -hmm. make the dollar the choice. I hate when countries go off the dollar. I would not allow countries to go off the dollar because when we lose that standard, that will be like uh, losing a revolutionary war. That will be, that will be a hit to our country, just like losing a war. And we can't let that happen. And too many countries now are fighting to get off the dollar. And crypto teacher and the new world order book plus the three kids books is time to reeducate. Also, new cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, receiver, the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip.
of the three books, there's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.